You can be beautiful. You can be smart. You can have your stuff together and be falling apart at the same time. And that's why I'm here. Like, I'm I'm so glad to know you ladies. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. You know what I love about our group is that, you know, I, I saw this uh, reel that was posted of Pharrell earlier today. And I posted it on my story. And he said, the problem with... Uh, creative creatives without business are often victims and business without creativity is often pointless and he cussed right often uh, lacks a lot of life right and I really really appreciated that because I approach my business almost as an art form right and each one of you ladies have really mastered your craft in, in your own your own lane. And I love that you said that we're all a type personalities because what you'll notice, and, and I see this a lot among, you know, women that sometimes among women, there's a competitive culture that really doesn't need to exist. But when you are around other strong women who are confident in who they are, um, that doesn't exist. My relationships with women um, that are the healthiest are with women that are strong and a type like me as well. And I have seen a lot of people, and I've met a lot of people in person when they finally meet me in person, like someone would be like, oh my gosh, I thought you were going to be stuck up. And I'm like, really? <laughs> like, that's so interesting to me. Um, so that's why it's important. It's important to, to me. I think it's one of the callings of my life to create safe spaces for women for that purpose, um, because we don't need to be competitive. I think this is a prime example of what can happen when, you know, a healthy meeting of the minds comes together. So I just want to publicly thank you all for encouraging my crazy and embarking on this wonderful journey with me. I love you all. This is going to be really, really fun. So I love you too. Let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into it. Okay. Topic number one for today. I'm going to kick us off. Um, and this was special to me because I, as you guys know, um, most of you know, Patty and I have been uh, friends for a few years and she um, is Muslim and she observes Ramadan and she is someone who is, I mean, so tapped into her culture that I've learned so much about her culture just from being in her proximity. So when anything happens in the world, I'm thinking about how does this affect my friend, right? There's differences, but we're so similar in so ways, in so, so many ways. So I want you, I wanted to give you all a platform today to talk about what Ramadan is uh, for people who, dot, who do not know and how the rest of us can support our friends who are observing Ramadan this month. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. And Nasima, I had forgotten that you were raised Muslim and I'm so glad to know that we're fasting together. It's nice. Yes. I love Ramadan. I love Ramadan. It just has this, there's an energy about Ramadan that really brings you to a place of self-awareness. And I was traveling through the airport. And when I was traveling through the airport, not only on the way there, but on the way back, for some reason, someone was hel helped me skip the entire security line, go right to the front and took care of me. And then they even added like an extra time on my boarding pass so that I can get on after the A group so that I don't have to check my bag. I don't even know how that happened. And I almost cried because I thought, wow, this is the blessing. These are the little miracles that happen during Ramadan that are so hard to explain. I'm feeling emotional just talking about it. Mm. And it's a time of year where technically speaking, if you want something to visualize where they, uh, Muslims will teach you that the devil is locked up during the month of Ramadan. So you can't be tempted and you can't be thrown off course. This is a time where you could truly be dedicated to God. You are without excuse. And often the most, the first thing that someone will say when you're telling them that you're fasting is, oh, well, not even water, right? Like that's the most common thing here. Oh my God, not even water. Yeah, no, we're not even drinking water. And guess what? You're not even thirsty. You're just going through it. You're not thirsty. You're not hungry. And it's so funny because throughout this and before Ramadan comes, I will try 700 diets. I'll be like, I got, I'm not got to stop eating carbs. I really got to stop eating sugar. I really got to stop doing this. And I right. can't do any of it, you know, but then Ramadan comes and I'm like, man, look, I can't drink no water. I got to do, you know, so there is this, it's a beautiful energy when you embrace it. And during basically from sun up to sundown, uh, from, when the sun rises to the sun sets, we don't consume anything, water, drink. And if you're married, you're not sleeping with your spouse either. So you're giving that up. If you're a smoker, you're not smoking, right? So there's, you're giving up everything during the time that the sun is out. And when the sun sets, um, you get to, you know, break your fast and enjoy that time with family. And some of the lessons that come from it are just this, this immeasurable sense of gratitude and awareness 
about how much we consume that we don't need. And oh, the theme, it's, and man, it's, it's hard because I am feeling a little emotional because I didn't have a chance to talk about what I experienced as I was traveling for a few days and I maintained my fast and how things just kind of happened. So it's a very beautiful time and it's a part of the Muslim faith. There are five pillars um, in Islam that are important and um, of which one of them is fasting. So this is a very holy time for Muslims and it's a very important time to observe fasting and it's much deeper than just not eating. Um, I mean, your prayer life gets deepened, the, what you observe gets deepened. And of course, your ability to release certain attachments in the world becomes much, much stronger. And the hope and prayer is that we can maintain that throughout the year. So Nasima, please add to it. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting as I don't really um, practice Islam anymore, but I still understand the value of Ramadan and fasting. And it's definitely one of those things that totally like grounds you and recenters you. If you're mm -hmm. ever at a place in your life where you need to be refocused, I think <laughs> a Ramadan gives you that opportunity to get there. And so I love participating in Ramadan. I love the fasting. I love the practice. I love the energy around it. Um, and it's interesting because I haven't done it in a long time because there's rules. Um, like you were traveling, you're not, you don't necessarily have to fast. Um, if you're a woman and you're menstruating, you don't necessarily have to fast. Well, over the last however many years I've either been pregnant or breastfeeding and I'm still actually breastfeeding right now, but I chose to participate because I really just wanted to get back to that center. Like I really felt off kilter and I know that this season will help me get there. And that's what I'm using it for. And um, even in these first three days, I can already see things starting to realign for me. Mm -hmm. Things are getting easier. I'm getting a lot of more, a lot more clarity in my life. And so, um, yeah, I'm really cherishing this season mm -hmm. and just honored to be able to participate in it. I've been doing, and I've been fasting since I've, I was 12. So it's not anything new. It's just something I, I've been out of practice of doing. And I also think it's really cute that my 10 year old daughter is fasting. Well, she made up her own rules around it, but I still <laughs> think it was really cute because I didn't even tell her our, uh, our um, expect it from her. So it's beautiful. Yeah. Can I my ask a question? Old. Because I, I thought, I thought it was, so, first of all, I think it's so beautiful because I love how it's like the connectivity between the sacrifice and how you, it's almost like, you t you're very in tune with your faith because of the sacrifice, mm. right? And it's it's beautiful to hear you are t uh, speak about it. Offline, Asima, you were mentioning that when you were younger. And Patty, maybe you had the same experience that when you all were practicing Ramadan or just because of your faith in general, you were kind of possibly the one that was iced out or you got. And to me, I think it's important to bring that up because I think that a lot of times we isolate people that do not have the same beliefs in religion and faith as us. When sure. if you really study, we have a lot more in common than not, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And for me, um, when I talk about like the isolation, so my dad converted to Islam. So we're African-American Muslims and but not nation of Islam, not black Muslim, you know, so not FOI. And so there's a very small percentage of us. And so the isolation can go both ways. Right. We can get it from um, the Islamic community that are mostly middle, middle Eastern that, you know, might say, oh, well, well, how did you become a Muslim? Do you even know what your name means? Like I would get that. And then like predominantly from uh, African-Americans, I'd be, I'd be like, oh, you're Muslim. You're not Christian. You don't do this. You don't do that. And so I was like, mm -hmm. I never kind of felt like I, I belonged kind of anywhere. Um, and so it was always this battle of, um, trying to like connect with people on a certain level, but then also still having a, a community, a smaller community, um, to be able to connect with, but it's still like, as far as like, most of my friends, I was the only one, you know, so that was hard to navigate, but it also prepared me for life because going into college, I was the only one that looked like me. And in certain arenas, even now, I'm the only one that looks like me. And so it prepared me to be able to navigate situations where I'm the only. And so, uh, you know, it was just a learning experience. It also um, allowed me to, like you said, Lady J, like, explore different religions and understand how 
um, interconnected they are and how, you know, there's so much in common and that there's truth in everything and just being able to understand the beauty that lies in Islam and the beauty that lies in other religions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think you have to address the fact that there's an issue in there's migration, right? I'm from I'm a product of the diaspora, right? My parents are not from here. My parents migrated to from Iran. And when you come here, it's not just your religious differences. It's the fact that we eat on the floor. We take our shoes off before we go into the house. Um, We observe a fasting month or there's so many different things that isolate you culturally in high school that you don't my parents not being able to speak. English, having the thick accent, uh, not not getting involved in any extracurricular activities because they don't know better. You know, there's a million different ways that as a Muslim, you feel isolated and and different. Um, But, you know, to save some time and not go too deep into that, I think what I'd like to address more is the unity. See, in in the Quran and in the Quran, in the Quran, you do not have any instance where the Bible is put down or or Jesus is put down, right? Jesus is completely glorified throughout Mm -hmm. the entire teachings of Islam. And on top of that, there's one thing that we all have in common across every single sect, across every single religion, and is that we believe that there is no God but God. There's one God, right? There's one God. We serve one God. And that is the basis of Islam, right? So there are so many, so many things and thoughts and conversational points that could unify us. And especially from the Muslim religion, because there's so much you can take from the, the, or on the Quran about science, about math, about unity, about the unity that comes from all of the teachings of the various prophets and how that can be, you know, we could do 10 shows on that, right? So we are more alike than we are different. But if you believe that there is one God and there's no God, but that God, then you can call yourself a Muslim. You're almost halfway there. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Well, we we always appreciate like what do they say? We perish for a lack of knowledge. Um, uh, we're, we're the thing that I love about the the differences and the similarities is that you don't have to force anybody to believe what you believe. But we're all centered in love, and this is why I keep saying why why this works, right? 